welcome. Take your radio news hour. We're back. I guess Christmas is over, so no more Merry Christmas. But happy Wednesday. It's a hump day. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group. And our toll-free number, 800-951-0592. Legal, lawful, constitutional tender, a.k.a. wealth insurance. Talking about gold and silver, it is what we do, and we do it better than anybody. And the website at allamericangold.com, where we keep you, well, we disturb the comfortable, right? You know, all of you out there that uh, are a little bit off, right? We, we also, right, uh, make you feel good, too. We, we got you covered either way. Comforting the disturbed, disturbing the comfortable, allamericangold.com will let you do just that. And uh, I was hoping maybe a few days off would help uh, the Dow open up almost 300 points. Uh, It is now down. Uh, We'll see. It's early Uh, right now. It's not down a lot, but it's down about 10 points. Uh, gold at, at another high here. Well, it's not all-time high or anything like that, but uh, gold's now in positive territory for the year. It's up, uh, wow, uh, up 11, 1278, 1279. Silver, big day for silver. Silver's up 40 cents right now, $15.10 to the ounce on silver. Uh, and, and again, a little later than I thought. I, I thought this was going to happen months ago, uh, but but uh, here we are. Uh, the the Dow suffering the worst December, you know, I guess on record going back to the Great Depression, and uh, a lot of a lot of details out there and all that stuff. We'll get to it all. We will. I promise. We're going to break it all down. What's going on with the with Federal Reserve? What's going on with the president? Does the president, can the president fire the Fed chairman? I'll give you the answer to that today and a whole bunch more. Uh, The government shutdown still in effect. My guess, if I was to guess, it'll stay there because the Democrats will want to wait until they take control of the House in January. We'll see how long it goes. Uh, the If you missed that, right over the holidays, the government has been shut down, so we won't get a lot of the economic data uh, reports that we normally get. Uh, we did have one piece of non-government data out today, and I'll give you all that uh, as well. But I, I want to first tell you, I hope you all had a great holiday. And uh, I know we did. My mom was in town. My Our oldest son was, was back from college, and... Eric and Lori and their kids and their grandbabies. I, I was holding a, uh, a baby uh, over Christmas, and we had a bunch of friends. Over. We had a great time. It's one of our bigger Christmas parties yet, and and I will say this, that I'm fat for a reason, because number one, my wife can cook. Number two, my mom can cook. So uh, I had both of them. Uh, in full effect. My mom hasn't taken that apron off since she, you know, the first day she got here, she was all sick and this and that, uh, but but she's r- rallying. Uh, I mean, we had wedding soup. We had meatballs. We had all pastas. That was before Christmas. And then we had what I like to call the, the trio of meats for Christmas. We had uh, the tenderloin. We had the ham. And one of my, one of my buddies, who his family spent Christmas with us, and we had the smoked turkey. So we had the triumphant of meat, and and I did the best damage that I could. And I hope y'all, you know, wherever you were, I hope you enjoyed the Christmas holiday, getting ready for New Year's. Uh, just an update: we're closed Monday and Tuesday again next week. Get your orders in. Yeah, you can wait. Listen, and I know that that you want to believe. We all want to believe. Listen, you're going to call. Why not call the best gold dealer in the world? Why don't I call us? We're going to treat you the way we treat everybody. Honesty, respect, 
no high margins, no no games, no gimmicks, none of that. Listen, I, I promise you, if you're a new, well, maybe not a new listener, but if you've never done business with us and you're thinking, you know what, I, I probably need to start listening to that guy, and maybe I need to do something about it, you're not going to get treated better anywhere else. I, I, I promise you. Just call us. We, we Listen, our goal is real simple. We want to get you the right gold at the right price, which is in silver and all the other ones, right? We want you to buy as close to spot as possible. I mean, it's really that simple. And when you buy it and sell it and trade it, you can stay private, right? You don't have to get your 1099. You don't have to do any of that other stuff. Uh, and and uh, like I said, 23 years we've been here doing it the right way. Uh, and and we'll, we're going to be here for another 23 and hopefully a whole lot longer than that. Wouldn't that be something? You know, first of all, to say you're in business 23 years anymore is saying something. Uh, but, uh, hey, why not go for 50? Patriot Radio News Hour. When we get back, we're going to talk about the Fed and the president and what can Trump do and what he can't do when we return. Remember how they told you, you got to be a long-term investor. Right and and I laugh because it, it's if you want to give your money to a banker, then I guess it's okay. You know, and, and you've heard me, and I've been really critical, and I will continue to be. The four hundred one k, that's not for you. You you need to all understand that none of that stuff's for you. They tell you it's for you. It's really for them, right? They get break up all the fees and and pretend that they've got all this economic prosperity while they're just slowly bankrupting all of us. I mean, that's really what they're doing. But I, let me go, and, I, and I'll just, this is a back of a napkin, okay? The Federal Reserve, along with Richard Nixon, right, got got us off the gold standard August 15, 1971. The very next day, I turned one, by the way. Now, what does that have to do with it? Nothing. But, you know. And from that day forward, we've embarked on the greatest Ponzi scheme ever conceived and ever, I mean, and really used against a nation of, of uh, the, the most populous nation. Well, I shouldn't say populous because obviously uh, China's got the population, India's got population. We're not that big population wise from some of the big countries. But the most prosperous nation. And they did it. With, with trying to convince us that this was going to make us more prosperous. I mean, right. Give up your pension, and we're going to give you this 401k. It was such a great plan. They even matched. I don't, you know, some companies still do, but uh, when during the sex time, sure, there'll be even less to get. But, uh, uh, but nonetheless, and I, and I just want to go back to that time. And I'm going to give favorable numbers. So, so this is just back of the napkin. And I'm not going to use $35 for gold. Because technically that's what it was. But I'm going to use 42 So the, I think when gold was allowed to trade, and I don't know the exact day gold started trading on the exchange, but $42, dollars if you had a hundred grand in 1971, and all you did, because you could finally remember, you could not own gold in this country from 1933 all the way up until when Nixon closed the gold window. A lot of people don't realize that because it took them that long. They had to brainwash a whole generation of people. Right. And then, no, 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 you know, you, you want these dollars, right? I mean, pieces of paper with colored ink or gold, right? Come on. 
And you see, every once in a while we play that clip of that guy in the street, the man on the street, the you, you want a 100-ounce silver bar or a Hershey bar, you want this, right? They always take the candy and all that stuff, right? This is how dumb they've dumbed us down. But if you were able to buy gold and you wanted U.S. minted material, you had to buy the old 20, right? The Liberties and the Saints. It had 42 bucks with 100 grand. You could have bought 2,300, and I'll round it up a little bit, 81, because 2,380.95. So let's just say eight, volume discount, you got 2,381 of them. Okay? The Dow, about 900, 1971. Matter of fact, I want to say the end of 71 closed the year a little higher. Than that, but close enough, 900 points. The Dow, when I did this this morning, was at 21,000. Remember I told you that before the end of the year we were going to see 21,000. Here it is. 21,817. By the way, if you had $100,000 and you took that and bought the Dow at 900, which I don't even know if you could do that. I don't know if they had that because that would They've gotten more sophisticated in their scams. But let's just say you could. That would have been 111.11. I did not round down for the Dow. Like I said, I'm giving you a favor. I kept the .11. If you, multi- if you took that 111.11 share and you multiplied it by today's Dow price, you'd have $2.424 million. It's pretty good. Now, of course, <laughs> that would be no fees, no nothing, right? We know over the, what is that, 29, call it, 29, 39, let's just, you know, almost 50 years worth of fees, right? You got a lot less than that, but that's what it would be. Gold, 2,381, and now gold's actually higher than this right now, but I'm using the number, it was 1,275 when I did it this morning. That'd be three million thirty-five thousand seven hundred seventy-five dollars. So again, this is something you can do on your own if you'd like. Long term, right? And and again, everyone likes to pick out different dates. For me, this is pretty simple. You went off the gold standard. Let's measure the two. Who's winning? Now, granted, right, hey, well, you know, the Dow's falling five, 6,000 points. You're right. You're right. But think about this. You know, you, you buy your gold for me. I don't call you up every year and tell you, hey, uh, you know, I know you bought 100 grand last year. Uh, can you send me a check for two? Send me a check for two grand. You know, for the... For that gold, yes. How about if you bought it back then? Wait, well, now, uh, actually, in 1971, uh, you bought a hundred grand worth. It's now worth three million bucks. Hold on, three million bucks. This is how Wall Street does it. It's even worse than that. They charge you two percent on that. Uh, how about you send me sixty grand? <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, come on. So I, I just wanted. I don't. I don't know what possessed me to do it today, but that's. Uh, I did it. I just wanted to throw that out there to you. You're going to be just fine buying gold. You're going to be just fine. So today, I told you there's a couple of pieces of economic data out real quick. MasterCard, this is the one you probably heard the most of. What a great retail sales it was, right? Great Christmas sales. Best in six years. Do you know why it was the best in six years? Listen, I don't want to poo-poo it. I think it's good. But every six years or so, you have the really early Thanksgiving, which we had this year, and Christmas, the best for the retailers. And I, I guess I didn't know that someone actually had to explain it to me, is if Christmas is on Tuesday. Because that way you get Saturday and Sunday because I thought, well, Christmas on Monday. Actually, they like New Year's Eve on Monday because a lot of businesses like mine will say, ah, take Monday off too. 
right? And, and so that's the best case scenario. So it should have been up, and it was. But I just a little context there. The other one was Case Schiller. That was housing. It's getting ugly. And, and I don't need. I won't give you all the details. But let's just say this: the the year over year increase is falling. This was a number, an October number. So by the time they get to the December number, you're going to see it probably close to half of the top 20 cities where the majority of people living are going to have negative numbers. Uh, but but an October number, uh, and again, just showing the slowdown in the prices uh, and. Uh, those are the only two pieces of economic data we got. The other interesting news, as the Dow was crashing, and Wall Street, the S&P, the NASDAQ, you heard about the president being unhappy with Jerome Powell, Jay Powell, the Fed chief, and talk of possibly firing the the Fed chief and replacing him, and of course I told you I've been saying this right. We can't even fire these people. So let me clarify. In the setup of this central bank, they were very cognizant that they did not want the people. Because remember, the government people that we elect are supposed to do the will of the people. Remember that. They didn't want the government to get into their banking business. So what power does the president have? It's actually very simple. You can fire a Federal Reserve chairman, which, by the way, it's never been done, which ought to tell you uh, a little bit about it. Because you think about their track record and how bad they are. And I don't mean to be critical. I want them to be good. They're, they're just not. You only can fire the Federal Reserve Chairman for cause. Let me give you an example of what they mean by cause. Hey, we just uncovered evidence that the central banker is profiting from uh, insider knowledge. Or uh, we just caught him uh, stuffing a bunch of cocaine up his nose. Or uh, he was taking prostitutes and putting them in their suitcases and bringing them up to their uh, penthouses or something like that. Right? Something like that. You could make the case to fire. An example of what you can't do. Well, I just don't like the fact that he was raising rates. Right? Or he's horrible at predicting stuff. He told everybody that the GDP was going to be this, and it turned out to only be that. He said 4%, it's only 2%. He's wrong all the time. He's bad at his job. That's not a reason. Uh Uh-uh. He can be as bad as they want, and you can't fire him. And so just, just to keep that in mind of what the law says, the, and the other thing, too, and people, and really people, the, I'll call them the Democrats, the liberals. They make a big deal about Donald Trump trying to influence the Federal Reserve. Now, we can argue about whether or not he should. Right? They'll go out on Twitter and, and say, hey, you know what? I don't like what he's doing. Personally, I think he's the president. I think he should say that. Because it's very obvious to me, he really isn't good at his job. I don't even get all the data Jay Powell gets, and I can tell you that. But neither here nor there. I just want you to know, and this was a well-known fact. 
and you could Google it yourself and research your, research it yourself. This just tells you how hypocritical Washington really is. Lyndon Johnson, a Democrat, he was the last, well, he was a big reason, by the way, when we closed the gold window in 1971, and I tell this story a lot, right, gold, or, uh, the debt was $400 billion. Over 20, just over 25% of that is Lyndon Johnson. Right, because he 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 put in uh, food stamps and a bunch of these other quote unquote safety net programs. Right, he expanded government. Right, he was a big government expander. But he had a very famous interaction with his Fed chief. I'll tell you about that next. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, a daily commentary continuing the conservative pro-family legacy of Phyllis Schlafly. Now, here's the president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, Ed Martin. Phyllis Schlafly loved to remind her listeners about important historical figures and events. Two of her favorites, the birth of our Savior and George Washington's great first victory for our new nation, fell on the same day. And I'm happy to share the story of Washington's victory with you now. In December of 1776, the cause of American independence was on the verge of collapse. One-fifth of General George Washington's army was unfit for combat due to sickness, and hundreds more were suffering through the brutal winter without adequate clothing. Most enlistments would expire on January 1st, and few soldiers would renew their contracts without some hope of victory in the midst of all their suffering. George Washington planned an attack on the village of Trenton, New Jersey, where 2,000 Hessian mercenaries were headquartered. It was to take place on Christmas night, with Washington himself leading the primary force of 2,400 troops. The Americans' password that night was, Victory or Death. Washington's troops reached the Delaware River at sunset on Christmas Day. Large chunks of ice in the river complicated the crossing. At 11 p.m., a vicious winter storm blew in, and two of his men froze to death. The crossing was completed at 3 a.m. Washington and his men arrived at Trenton at 8 a.m. Despite all the snags in the plan, the Americans completely surprised the Hessians, quickly seized the high ground of the city, and took control of the battle with artillery fire. The Americans fought tenaciously against the Hessians from house to house. In 45 minutes, the battle was over. 21 Hessians killed, 90 wounded, and over 900 taken prisoner. Not a single American died in the fighting, and only four were wounded. It was an incredible victory. News of the victory spread quickly throughout the states. George Washington had hoped that some kind of victory would rouse the spirit of the people, as he said. Indeed, it did. The victory at Trenton convinced Americans and the rest of the world that the struggle really could be won. The victory George Washington led is the greatest Christmas present America ever received. It made American independence possible. It surely was the second greatest Christmas in history. This has been the Phyllis Schlafly Report from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. Whether it's the vision of our founding fathers, the courage of our veterans, the moral compass of Christopher Columbus, or the fortitude of presidents like Lincoln and Reagan, the truth of history should not be undercut by liberal ideology. At Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, we honor history even as we look to the future. Join us at phyllisschlafly.com. That's phyllisschlafly.com. 800 just, just imagine. Right? You're working your job, and, and you always get it wrong. Right? Your boss, like, hey, I need this report, that report, and then tell me where we're going to be at the end of the year. You know? And you're wrong every time. Well, what would happen? Yeah, you know, you'd go on the apprentice. Yeah, you're fired. Right? Give the old apprentice job. <laughs> right? I mean, yeah, duh. Could you imagine? Hey, guess what, Fed Chief? You're really bad at telling us what's going to happen. I'm going to replace you. Who could argue with that? Come to find out, guess what? You can't. Great case in point, Lyndon Johnson. His fed his fed chief was was a guy named Martin, okay. And 
Lyndon Johnson let it be known that he did not want Martin to raise rates in 19, I think it was 1965. And the Fed chief did. Johnson called them up and said, hey, I want you to come down to my ranch in Texas. So the Fed chief, you know, president calls, you know, I'm, I'm going to go to his ranch. And he let everybody know that he was going to take the Fed chief to the wood chip. Right? You know, that's, that's code for give him a whooping, right? Going to give, give him a beat down. And he actually physically assaulted the Fed chief, had him up against the wall in, in his house in Texas. So I don't want to hear about, oh, you know, Donald Trump shouldn't, you know what, if he's doing a bad job, somebody should say something. But I just wanted to let you know where that really stands. Could he? No. Actually, he couldn't. At least not now. Right? Again, like I said, now, if Jay Powell was doing a bunch of cocaine, then he, I guess he, we could. But if he doesn't do any of those nefarious things, and he's just bad at his job, that's not enough. Now, again, right now, I, I, I say it all the time, right? He's deep state guy, Jay Powell. And the guy is, is uh, heavily connected. And and remember, right, this was, a, you know, in fairness, Trump picked him to be the guy. I bet he wishes he picked differently now. Uh, but nonetheless, I just, I just wanted to give you that little piece of history. That president, and, and, and I use, it doesn't matter, Reagan. Want to use Reagan? Reagan was furious at Paul Volcker. Just was so, I mean, let everybody know, this is not new. And I just, you know, it's just because just it's funny. It's funny to me, the, the hypocrisy of the media today. Right, and on both sides, right? Uh, enough already. Can we just knock this crap off? And let's just start talking honestly about the problem. So uh, I'm going to tell you how bad I think they're going to get. Because remember, I, I, I know they want to say, oh, no, it, it's, it's fine. Do your homework. Remember the Jim Cramer clip I played where he said, Jay Powell isn't doing his homework. I actually, we have several customers that work for UPS. We all know UPS. I got a call this morning, and, and like I say, if you really want to talk to me, call me early in the morning. I'm here, and it was early. I, I want it was before seven this morning. One of our customers who works for UPS got sent home today, along with three hundred other UPS employees. Why? Not enough work today. I happen to know a kid, uh, and I say a kid, he's in his mid-20s. He's a temporary guy at UPS, right? Helps for the holiday. They're supposed to work through New Year. And today, didn't even get a call to come into work. And it, and it's just I'm just using that as an example. Things have slowed dramatic fact. I just I'm getting an update as we speak. It's live radio. The, that temporary helper just got a call saying we don't need you for the rest of the year. Job over. I know we said that we wanted you here till the end of the year. Now you you take the rest of the week off. So uh, and again things have slowed dramatically. You don't see it yet in the numbers. All of these numbers are, you know, like Kate Schiller today. That was an October number, and it still wasn't good. 
yes, we got this retail sales number, but I told you that there's a reason why it was the best in six years and not the best in 26 years. Right, because you had the you had the perfect storm for retail sales, early Thanksgiving and Christmas on a Tuesday. Apparently, Tuesday's like the best day. Maybe what we should do is just do uh, the same thing we do on Thanksgiving that we do in, in, in for uh, for Christmas, and just say, "Hey, listen, Christmas is always on a Tuesday because we need the retail sales." Here's the problem: come January, you got to make that payment, and that what has me worried. Jay Powell uh, is cost a lot of people jobs. A lot of people jobs with this policy. A lot of, not just jobs, pay raises, you name it. He's cost them. How about this number? You know what? We're coming up on the break. I'll get to this number in a minute. The largest growing segment of debt. We're going to talk about that in the next segment. So you think about In the last 20 years, when it comes to the consumer, the largest growth of debt is in student loans, and it's not even close. As a matter of fact, now student loans, there's more student loan debt than anything else uh, besides a mortgage. This is how corrupt they really are. I'll give you an update on how well people are doing. And I'm going to tell you right now, this number is shocking even to me, so you know how big it is, uh, as to who is paying, who isn't paying, and when you do pay, what are you paying? Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back right after the break. 800-951-0592. That is our toll-free number. Uh, Gold's up... uh, well, ten bucks right now, twelve hundred seventy-seven dollars. Silver up forty-four cents now, fourteen fifteen dollars and fourteen cents to the ounce. Uh, the Dow uh, has been really moving back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. Right now, it's back, back up two hundred. Uh, it's been up almost three hundred. It's been down uh, about eighty-five. Right now, it's up two hundred as they try to recover a little bit from from what's been happening but know this things have changed and they have changed very very quickly but that's actually not true i've been telling you since the the summer when we had a 4.2 percent gdp things are slowly remember when the confidence numbers they were skyrocketing and i was telling you classic top sign. What was that, two months ago? I was telling you, get out. This retail sales number, it's another top. It is. Then I just told you about UPS. <laughs> and the reason I know about the seasonal, Arlene, one of Arlene's sons is a seasonal employee for UPS. He's supposed to work all the way until next week. Called them today, said, hey, thanks. Good job. We don't need you. The real UPS employees in Phoenix today, over 300 got sent home. Currently, and the number one growth of debt, student loan. Matter of fact, student loan is now approaching $1.6 trillion of debt. According to, this was uh, through CNBC, Fewer than 25% of student loan borrowers are repaying their principal. Excuse me? Now, I've known for a long time that, like, we, we know that what, somewhere around 30% of people weren't making any payment. Now they're saying... More than 75% of the people with a student loan are paying no principal. This was done by uh, Education Secretary Betsy DeVos released the information. I know, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and, and say if anybody should know, 
It should be the education secretary. Maybe she made that announcement. Now the government's closed. She doesn't have to answer any questions. The people that are paying, the vast majority of people that are paying student loans, are paying just the interest, if anything at all. They said their monthly payments are just too high, and they really can't afford to pay the actual principal. They, they use this example, this guy Rick Tadali. He borrowed around $55,000 in the 1990s. Uh, just so you know, uh, Rick here uh, graduated law school. Okay, so uh, you know, did what you know they told him to do. He has struggled to find employment, and again, he's a law school graduate, and he struggled to pay his bills. Today, his student loan balance is well over three hundred grand. Yeah. See, here's the problem when you don't pay. The interest keeps coming. And according to the education secretary, you are, uh, well, almost nobody's paying them. If you started out with a balance of 50000 then I will tell you I have one son in college. The school that he goes to, and this is just room and board, okay? Books weren't included in this number. Any money I give him for living expenses aren't included, okay? $57,000. Now, we don't pay that. Uh, thankfully, he's a really good football player, and uh, the school covers more. I, I, I'll just tell you, I, I'm paying about 15000 of that number. I'm fortunate enough, my wife and I, to be able to pay that. But even at that fifteen thousand number, that wouldn't even fifty grand wouldn't even get you graduated. If you had fifty thousand, and you had a rate of five percent, and remember, right, Jay Powell, not helping all you student loan borrowers out there. And the interest will accrue on your debt while you're in school. Now, you don't have to pay for it, but it accrues while you're there. It will continue to do it through a grace period. So you racked up the debt while you were there, growing the whole time. You didn't make any payment. You graduate or you don't, either way. You get a grace period. The six months after graduation, when you're not required to make a payment. When your bill starts to roll in, your debt has already grown by just under $6,500. So you haven't even made a payment yet, and your balance is already over $56,500. Bucks. I'll tell you how well you're doing when we return. Final segment coming up. Final segment here on this Wednesday. So I want, uh, I'm just bringing this up because we are in this death spiral, and I, I just want to keep telling you and reminding you, it's not just the national debt. It's not just all the debt of these businesses and, and, and all these things, and the Fed's been raising rates. Listen, the defaults are coming. They're coming. They didn't fix it. They All they did is they papered over it with debt and pretended that they fixed things. And, and, and I wish I had better news. I'm going to tell you right now, either you prepare or you don't. That's on you. So you just graduated. You borrowed 50. Six months after graduation, 
you already owe $56,458. But you're like, wait a minute, I, I, I just started. I got nothing. I, I don't have that kind of money. I want a deferment, the economic hardship deferment. And you'll get it. Matter of fact, they'll give it to you for, uh, I want to be sure here. I think it's up to three years. Okay, you don't have to pay for another three years. During that time, your balance has now gone up to essentially sixty-five thousand dollars, and you still haven't paid a bill. And then when people start having to pay, they're like, "I can't pay that," and they're not paying any principal F at all. But most of them, right? We know almost what thirty percent don't pay anything. Now we found out today more than 75% of people with a student loan are not paying principal at all. So you can see how a guy who borrowed 50,000 in the 90 owes 300 grand today. You think he's, you think he's paying? I don't think so. 800-951-0592. That is the toll-free number. Uh, again, gold's up 10, 1200 Seventy-seven dollars in change. Silver's up forty-three cents, fifteen dollars thirteen cents. The Dow, it's up two eighty. So back to where it was again this morning, up two eighty. Uh, the the S and P and the Nasdaq are higher as well. A little surprised that's all. Now it's early. I would I would hope for a little bigger bounce. Cause I don't even know how many thousands of points did we lose. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think the news gets better. Uh, when we start thinking about uh, where where we're at, what the Fed's doing, what Trump can and cannot do, uh, and just using UPS as an example today, uh, the big, big, big difference between uh, the old economic data points and the new ones that are coming in uh, tomorrow when we get back, uh, I don't know, again, remember, the government shutdown in effect. So I'm go- I'm assuming that we're not going to get, like, jobless claims and things like that. I, I-, I don't know, uh, but I would, as- I would assume that's non-essential. Uh, so I don't know what kind of economic data points we will get. But the ones we do get, I will definitely keep you abreast of things. Do yourself a favor. Call us today. I've got I've got some one-offs all over the place that we can work some great deals on. Give us a call. Get yourself ready, and we'll be back tomorrow.